the end of the world. Most visions are self-sufficient. They are not accompanied by explanations. But some, like the divine visions of heaven, carry meaning. I perceive the visual image for a few moments with strength and intensity. At this moment, all thought is stopped. I am no longer anything but pure conscience. But then, when my consciousness descends to more human planes, the message transmitted by the visions develops in the form of explanatory thoughts. A bit as if the visions represent a cell and then its DNA unfolded to transmit the message, the code that it carries. These thoughts arising after a vision should be considered with caution. Are they really the faithful reflection of the message or a construction, an adaptation of the mind, the imagination, the intellect to the level of understanding of the recipient? Bernadette Subiru's visions, for example, are demonstrations of these adaptations. As with divine visions, the end of the world vision only lasted a few moments and then I had the explanatory thoughts. I thought the earth was from a satellite. I recognized the Caspian Sea. The shock took place on its left, to the west, in the former Soviet Republic, with nuclear weapons, where a strong Muslim minority lived in conflict with the authorities, as in Chechnya. A group of Muslim soldiers, crazy for God, decides to commit the ultimate attack, absolutely unstoppable. They decide to use the most powerful hydrogen bombs they can access. They arrange them in beads on a line of several tens or hundreds of kilometers. Then these suicide bombers explode the whole thing simultaneously on the spot, without sending them anywhere which makes the attack perfectly unstoppable. The shock wave causes, among other things, an extremely violent and powerful wind that sweeps everything in its path all over the earth. English filmmakers made a film called The Bomb a long time ago. They had imagined that a nuclear uranium bomb of the same type as that which had struck Hiroshima would explode in central London. It was scary. Before the first atomic bomb exploded in the American Nevada desert, some worried scientists wondered if it could not cause a chain blast, like a catalyst, that could destroy the all Earth. If the precautionary principle had existed, this experiment would never have happened. Nagasaki and Hiroshima would not have been destroyed so suddenly. But we might still be as w- at war with a Japanese militarist. Fortunately, the reaction did not take place. But with a forefront exploding so powerfully, what scientists can say with any certainty that it would not happen? One of my neighbors, a friend to whom I shared this experience, told me that long before she had a nightmare that had affected her greatly. It was also a feeling of the end of the world, with terrifying winds ripping out its windows, destroying everything and dragging it in. Tornado victims have a taste of the destructive power of wind. Looking at a map of the region by the Caspian Sea, it seemed that the place corresponding to my vision is Azerbaijan, but without certainty. No date was specified. Although almost all the tradition of the world announce its end, they generally do not give a date. Some, by their description, as in the book of Revelation, make us think of our time. 9.7 Now it is low cost to see them. Make one think of horses equipped for war. On their head, they look like golden crowns, and their faces recall human faces, their hair, women's hair, 
and their teeth, lion's teeth, their thorax, an iron breastplate, and the noise of their wings, the noise of chariots with many horses rushing to battle. They have tails like scorpions with darts, and in their tails lies the power to torture men. These descriptions is reminiscent of combat helicopters with reflection on the pale water, the missiles, their armor. We remember the film Apocalypse Now, which took place during the Vietnam War, but with an even more sophisticated version of these deadly weapons, like the tiger, the last born of this charming locus. Another description further on suggests tanks. 9.17 such appear to me envisioned the horses and their riders. These were breastplates of fire, essence, and sulfur. When with horses, their head is like that of the lion, and their mouth spits fire and smoke and sulfur. 9.19 For the power of horses reside in their mouths, it also resides in their tails. Indeed, these tails, as well as the snake, have heads which they use to harm. If these descriptions correspond to our time, it is still a fairly long period, since the World War of 1914-1918, when it comes to tanks. As for helicopters, they only begin to be operational for combat from the 60s. A novel seems to describe a particular event clause in 2001, 10.1. Then I saw another mighty angel coming down from the sky, ripe in clouds, a rainbow above the head and the legs like columns on fire. And he put his right foot upon the sea and his left foot upon the land. And he uttered a mighty climber at the, as the roar of the lion. Then the seven thunders sounded their voices. Legs like columns of fire evoke the two burning towers of the World Trade Center of September 11, 2001. With legs like these, he's undoubtedly a powerful angel. He came down from the sky like the plane that struck them. The cloud, the smoke from the fire, fit at the water's edge like the towers on Manhattan Island. The loud clamor, the sound of the explosion of the planes led by the chemicals. The seven thunders illustrate the noise of the fire. A film made a few years ago, Kuyaniskachi, using a word from the language of the Hopi Indian of North America in New Mexico, depicted that their tradition had transmitted for a very long time. When the spider has finished weaving his web, it will be the end of the world. It was shown on the screen that his symbolic canvas represents all communication and transport networks, land, sea, air, and even space, routes with satellites, irrigation networks, transportation of water, gas, oil, electricity, telecommunications, telephone, wide or portable, radio, television, internet, etc. Are there still a lot of networks to be formed? Some, like Nostradamus, have embarked on prophecies that also announced this end. But they are so confused that they are made to say anything. Only one civilization, to my knowledge, has given a specific date. This is the Mayan civilization, the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico, which has developed a very complex and sophisticated calendar, allowing to predict the future. According to it, without specifying the cause, the event would take place at the time of the 2012 winter solstice. However, this my discovery has the meaning that I believe and that the extasium is indeed the revelation of the Book of Revelation, it must become public and reproduced everywhere on earth, 
which will require much more time than this date gives. Moreover, historians who look into these predictions assert that does not announce the end of the world, but the end of a cycle, written in 2008. A paragraph from the Book of John seems to abound in the sense of the end of the world visions that I received. It concerns the four horsemen, each one has a color, white for the first, red for the second, black for the third, and for the fourth and last, 6.7. And behold, a greenish horse appeared in my eyes. The one who rode it, we call it death. As far as I know, Islam is the only religion associated with a color, green. This religion, the latest in date, would be the one that brings the end of the world? People imbued in general with a strong spirituality, having brought back belief to the essential God, Allah. Would these people destroy everything? But wouldn't they rather be the instrument of openness towards something else? Something much more beautiful than the world we know, and anything itself each day a little more in danger? Back to home, let's not forget that Jesus said that his kingdom was not of this world.